Hey everyone. Thank you for attending our beauty care series. I'm Arianna Oldenburg, the assistant director at the Aveda Institute, Madison. Uh, we are honored to have the amazing and fashionable Susan Ford here with us today. Uh, Susan is a phenomenal stylist and educator with decades of experience. Some of Susan's editorial work has been seen in American Vogue and in trade magazines such as American Salon, Modern Salon and Aesthetica USA. Susan is currently the creative director of Asha Salon Spa in Chicago and is a highly requested master stylist. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Susan Ford. Hello everyone, Susan Ford here. Thanks so much, Erin. And thanks for joining in today. I'm thrilled to be part of IBW's series of online hair, hair cutting education. Today, I'm going to do a demo of Modern Shag, which is one of the hottest trends right now. Can work pretty much with any texture, any face shape. The main points I'll be going over today is the inspiration, the techniques of concave and convex layering, and some disconnection with the purpose, and some natural styling. So uh, throughout the class today, I'd love to answer any questions that you have. And uh, please pay, pay close attention because at the end of the class, I'll be asking one question and the first person to reply will win a prize. I'm hoping it's something really cool. I uh, don't know what it is, but good luck. So first today, I'm going to begin by explaining my sectioning and give you a look at the end result. And then we'll walk through step by step. So as you see here, I have a pre-done mannequin for the modern shag, and I'll just explain my sectioning. If you have your head sheets handy, uh, this will just give you a brief uh, overview on why I have the sections where I do. So first of all, with the modern shag, the focus is on the fringe, and it is a very heavy fringe, a, a curtain bang that we'll be doing. I'll talk about the inspiration for that, um, a really nice addition, and it's, I think it's the best thing to happen to long hair, having a curtain bang. So we're going to take that very um, deep, probably the highest point of the head, and then to the outer corners of each eyebrow right here. That'll be your first section you put in. And then you're going to go from the apex or just where the head starts to round right here and to behind the ear. You're going to cut that section in. And then you're going to further subsection that just around the parietal ridge area right through here. And you'll do that on the other side as well. Same thing through here. So you're left with a section of hair. And then through the back, now this area here that I have in the ponytail will be our disconnection. And then from here, from the um, around the occipital bone up to here, you have two more panels right in the back. So I'll explain that as I go, why all of those are there. So first of all, we will look before we uh, get into the step-by-step. -step. I have a pre-done. And if you recognize her, she's similar to your inspiration pics, um, all with the Ray-Bans and all. Um, what we have here is the focal point being the fringe area, the heavy fringe. You notice one of the points with modern shags is there's no parting. So that fringe, you can see that comes all the way through there, is quite heavy and extends to the outer corner of the eyebrows. So that when she wears her hair in a ponytail, she's got this cool little, uh, little added feature there of the... Um, disconnected area at the fringe, which really kind of hugs her, her um, face shape right through, right here, all right? And then the layers are all going all the way through the section of hair through the back. They start right about the top of the occipital bone, and because we're going to do a convex layer through the back, they will go all the way down to the end of the hair, the perimeter of the hair. Okay, so that's a little overview. So let's get started with the haircut. All right, so I want to show you um, one that I'll keep this pre-section done. If you'd like another look at that, let me know. All right, so we have this pre-section, the, the one that was in the ponytail. I just want to explain why this is disconnected right here. We want, with the modern shag, it is a lot more layers than we have traditionally in what we've been seeing for a very long time with the long layers. So what we want to do is we want to feel free to add all the layers around through the haircut and not run into our perimeter and create gaps or holes. So what I call this is like a safety net of hair. So we're gonna disconnect all of this hair, get this out of the way, and then we'll begin with our fringe and our layers 
and just go through the haircut. At the end of it, we're going to drop down this hair and we're going to blend in. I'll have a cool technique of blending this for you. So when you're taking this section, that's roughly um, kind of a guideline is just below the round of the head, the parietal, and just uh, at the top of the occipital bone or right there. So on the mannequin head, it's about halfway to the ear. Okay, so I'm gonna really tighten this up. And what I'm looking for is enough hair that when I put my layers over it, this will stay nice and solid that we won't end up with just little bits of hair coming down through here. So that's an important point to have enough hair that the layers will fall over that. So first thing I'm going to just disconnect all this, put a ponytail in here so that I, I don't accidentally, when I'm doing my layering, I don't want to accidentally pull this hair that I intend to be disconnected. So just a nice tight ponytail. Okay, so I have that nicely secured. Now I can start with my haircut. So it's very important to get your sections in before you start cutting. Therefore, you're not going to get lost in the haircut. I know where I am at each point. So I'm going to start with the fringe being the focal point of the haircut. And as you can see in your step-by-steps, we're taking a center parting. So even if your guest um, wears a side parting, we start out with the cen center because with the shag, there really is no definite parting. We just wanna have kind of a rough guide of there, but everything you'll see is connected to this fringe. Okay, so I'm going to start with a curtain bed. So the inspiration for this haircut really for me is um, someone I want you to look this up when you're finished with class today. Her name is Bridget Bardot. She was a sex symbol from the 60s and she had the curtain bang before anybody else did. She was really the, um, the inventor of the lived in hair. So we're taking our inspiration from her, which is the beautiful curtain bang that frames around the face, right? Comes to about the jawline. So my first section will be diagonal on either side of the parting. Let's move this out of the way. So I love a curtain fringe uh, because what the curtain fringe does with long hair, it's really a great, um, a great thing for guests who want something of a change with their hair, but they don't want to lose any length. This creates a big change. Okay, so I think I have a question coming in. You have a question from Maddie. Hi, Maddie. How often do you perform a shag haircut on a client? Uh, well, lately it's been a lot more, but I do feel like you do need to um, introduce it to your guests because they may not realize they have the option with their layers. In fact, I had someone recently ask me, um, you know, she said, I like all the, when I do the beach waves in my hair, I love how, you know, at the top I get all the curls, but at the bottom it seems too heavy and it falls out. So I introduced her to this um, shag haircut, which brings layers all the way through, distributes them evenly, so that when we do a curl, the ends are not weighed down with the heaviness of the traditional concave layering. Okay, I hope that answered your question there. So I am doing a little bit more now, uh, introducing it to my guests. And of course, my younger demographic, they're already bringing in the pictures. They, they love it. All right, so we're starting with the, the curtain bang. What we want to do, think about curtains. We're going to open up the curtains, move them across. So same on both sides. We want to just open up the face shape. This really depends on where you want to start. Totally up to you. Um, I'm going to start right about the bridge of the nose right here. So I'll take the full section. All right, bring my fingertips down to here. And at this point, I'm just using the inner corners of my blades right here. I'm not totally closing them. And as I'm cutting, I'm pushing the hair. So you just move your left knee, and then you're moving this, and you're coming around and around, and you're ending up somewhere about the cheekbone area. Okay, so when you see that, it's really pushing that hair across this way here. All right, I'll come to the other side, and I'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to take this section a full section over direct to the center, and I can take a little bit of the previous cut here as a guide. And I'll bring this section here. I'm going to cross over. I'm right-handed, so I cross over here to get me in the position of opening and pushing the hair. So I'm moving, like opening up those curtains and ending at the same point again 
on the other side here. So roughly about the top of the cheekbones right here. Okay. So this is where we end up. Okay, the next section comes down after that. So this is where I start taking areas moving in diagonal into the back of that very heavy fringe here. this section again so it's very important to move your body as you're cutting so as I bring all of this hair towards me I can see my guide underneath and with the uh, inner corners of the shears I'm moving 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 as I cut okay and then end up again just pushing that hair out and take a moment just to see where that's landing through here can see that on the side here it's coming right to her cheekbones and it's progressively going to get longer each section I take gets a bit longer till I end up to where I want to be right here at the jaw so again taking all of the hair into my fingers I cross over my arms so my body position is in the correct place and just open and close and moving that hair, pushing that hair as I'm cutting. So I end up right down again, around the same point on the other side. So I'll take again, just another section. I'm still in the fringe area right now. Okay, so the shears start up at the bridge of her nose, but they end right down where I want to land, where that hair wants to land, right about here. And the other side also. So I'm starting at the bridge of the nose and pushing the hair, ending up right down, getting closer and closer to that jawline right now. All right, so we can see we have the fringe done. We're right about where we want to be. So I know she wants to wear a ponytail. That will be good. She won't have that gap right there around the parietal ridge because we've taken that fringe right back um, into that area. So it'll sit a nice little bit of a kiss curl right around the sides here. Okay, so next step now, I'm going to take down this section on either side. If we have any more questions. From Cheyenne. How do you get comfortable when first getting used to cutting shanks? Um, I think uh, for me it's practice. I am practicing all the time. I'm understanding the technique, which is why I want to explain every step so that you really don't have any questions when you go to do this yourself. Um, and I always know that I'm available on Instagram. You can uh, direct message me, Susan Ford Hair. Um, anytime if you're about to start this or you want me to walk you through it again or you can watch this video again but it's really understanding sectioning and the reason why I think the reason why behind what you do will help you in your career so understanding why I'm doing this so getting comfortable and don't worry about layering we have our safety net our disconnection our safety net is there we're not going to lose her leg okay so that's a great thing mannequins always practicing on mannequins that is the main thing so I can't stress enough about practice how important that is for you um, in fact just yesterday I won the hairbrain shootout uh, with the mannequin that I did they were doing a shootout Be because we're all housebound they know that we don't have live models so um, they did a, a little competition on you know show your work with your mannequin so I was chosen as a winner and I won 50 hours of free education which is fantastic so excited for that right Okay, um, before I answer the other question, I just want to talk to you about the technique I'm going to do here in the front of the ears. So I know this is kind of a, an obvious statement, but it's definitely worth um, mentioning because I'm going to do two different techniques. So in front of the ear, from the ear forward, we only have this much hair to work with, right? It's only this much. From behind the ear, we have this much hair to work with. So if I did the same technique on both sides, would I end up with the, the, an even result? Definitely not. So I have to change based on the density of hair, the amount of hair I have. 
So in the front, I want to maintain some length as I go through here and add the layers, but I want to have enough to still fall down that they won't end up too short. So in the front layer, I'm going to do a concave layer, which means everything is going to be pulled up to the center and cut evenly there. So as it falls down, we've removed the weight, but we still keep length. In the back, I want to do the opposite. I want to do a con convex layering, convex layering, rounding out, so I'm able to get enough layering through the back. So everything is going to be based now off of, when I start my cut, it's based off of my fringe area. So where I left off at the triangle of the fringe now becomes my guide for all of the layers through the back. So if I stand right here, on the right side, in the right position, because I always want to, when I'm doing a, a concave layering, I always want to have the, the tips of my shears going upwards, and I want to cut from short to long. So I'm starting, my guide here is that point from the triangle where I did my curtain bangs is my guide for the back. So I'm going to begin by just bringing my fingers straight up. I'm doing concave, so this will be straight up, and I cut to my guide right here. Okay, well, did I have another question here? You've got a few. Okay. Um, two questions that actually come together. One from Alton, would this haircut work with thin hair? And one from Hannah, what type of hair texture do you think looks best with this cut? Um, first of all, thin hair, yes. With thin hair, you probably want to bring up your sections, your, your safety net, your disconnection a little bit higher so you don't go too far into your layers. So that, uh, my sections would vary with the, um, the density of hair, but absolutely. Thin hair, this looks great. Um, you know, it's all about the natural texture in the hair. So putting layers is the removal of weight. So I'm removing weight, so I need a lot of texture into the hair. So it does work good with fine hair. You just have to be a little bit more cautious with your disconnection and uh, disconnect a little bit higher in both the um, occipital bone and the parietal ridge area. And then the other question was, Texture? Well, Hannah's question was what type of hair texture do you think looks best yes. for this cut? Anyone who has a little bit of a wave or a good curl pattern, probably the hair I wouldn't do this on would be that hair that's more coarse, more frizzy, um, because with that type of hair, I think I would prefer to keep the weight in it, to weigh it down so I can control it a little bit. But if you want to enhance somebody's curl, if they already have a nice uh, curl pattern, you want to enhance it a bit more, it's great. Anybody who has a natural curl and they love to let the hair dry, hair dry, this is perfect also. So I'll continue pulling all the sections up to the center here. Everything is joined in. And you can see I'm cutting a, a concave shape right through here. We do have more questions. Okay, we? left the question. This Thank one you. is from, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name correctly, it's, it's Dewey or Dewey, mm -hmm. D-U-E-Y. What do you think is the most important step for this haircut? Uh, Pre-planning. Um, we call your sections as the blueprint of your work. So it's like an architect wouldn't go in and just try to make up a, a house, like a, a, you know, build a house without plans. So planning your work and working your plan. That means get your sections in with purpose. Why am I putting the section there? Um, I know with this here, I put my sections, my disconnected, because I don't want to bring all the hair and cut the perimeter when I'm doing my layers. I want to make sure that I have a safety net there. So that will be it. So sectioning the hair, really understanding what the hair is going to do, because I know as I'm cutting, you can already see that the, the releasing the weight right through here is giving a lot of curl. Here I have not, and you can see it's flattening out. So if you have texture, you want to enhance the curl, definitely add that layer through there. If you want to weigh down the hair, you might want to choose a different technique to keep that a bit heavier. So as we can see, some length is being cut here. I'm pulling all the hair, and it's gradually getting a bit longer. But don't worry, we still have all that length from the parietal ridge down to work with. Okay. So I'm going to stand on this side of the head and continue to over-direct off into the center because I want to keep my finger angle at the same angle all the way through and keeping my shears going up to the ceiling, short to long. Okay, any further questions? Yes. Cheyenne, would you say shags complement any face shape? Yes. <laughs> Many would, would disagree with me, but I think a fringe or I think a good, good fringe or good bangs suit everybody. I feel like it's a, a frame for the face. It draws all the attention to the eyes. 
it's great. And then, you know, these little disconnected pieces that come around here really kind of focus, push, put the emphasis on the, the lips as well. So yes, I think it's great for everyone. Ready for another one? I'd love another question, thank you. Marlena would like to know, how would you perform this cut on someone with curly hair? Um, same way, same way with curly hair. I would maybe again, it depends on the density of the curl. Um, it depends what type of curl you're talking about. Um, but I would do the sectioning the same. Maybe again, just be a bit more cautious with my um, disconnection. Maybe go up a little bit higher because you know, you can always add more layers in. Uh, the worst thing I think you could do with this um, type of cut is not give yourself enough hair here because then when you lay it down, it might just look like strings. So that would be my advice is just to be a little bit more cautious, especially working the first time. You want to see how that works. Okay. So now I have the front all through here. Um, you know, I've, I've guaranteed my guest that she still has all her length. I'm just working on the layers at the moment. So as I'm working through the hair, I want to see what it's doing. I kind of want to read the hair. And rather than just jumping into the back, I want to see what's happening here. And do I need to do a little weight removal through it? So I think here I just want to open up the face a little bit more with um, a little razor technique through here. So I'm just going to take a garnet razor and I'll just break up this space right here so it's not so heavy. Just using the tip of the razor. And just break it up a little bit, put some space between there. Okay, so I'm conscious as I'm cutting my guest hair that, you know, this is a big change for her. She's sitting there and she's seeing this happening in the mirror and, you know, she's dying to get her hands in it. So what I'll do is I'll start moving it around into the position that I want it to go in as it's drying so that as she's sitting there and I'm working through the back that she's looking really cute. And then just accentuate these little pieces around the front. So in here, this layer here is getting a little heavy right up through the top. So in through the heavier layer, I'm going to do a tipping technique that's bringing my razor up a little bit higher. I'm not going too deep into it. I really just want to separate. It's a way of texturizing, separating out the heaviness right at the top section here. And sometimes I do the whole haircut with a razor, but I thought today I'll just do a, a combination of both. Okay, so now we're just finished with the front. I'm gonna move into the back. So as I was saying, I like my guests to, to feel comfortable while I'm sitting there. So I'm going to shape the hair with my hands and even add a little bit of product. So if her hair was too curly, need a little bit more control, I would start to put some smooth infusion in. Um, with our mannequin, she's got a nice curl, but I want to enhance it a little bit more, so I'm going to use a style prep. If it's a guest who has a little bit more that I want to enhance a bit more of the curl, I'll use this, but I know with the mannequins, I can't take too much product, so I'm just going to stick with the style prep right now. And I did prep her earlier. I put a lot of the new neutral plenish. I hope you're all loving it as much as I am. I put that to prep the hair. That's really good for cutting um, when you're styling in the salon because it keeps the moisture content in the hair while I'm cutting. So if you notice, I'm going to do minimal of um, uh, wetting down the hair because my intention is to air dry this shag and I want it to uh, start drying as I'm cutting it without wetting it down too much. All right, so an important point of drying the, sh uh, the shag is using your hands and being very delicate. I'm almost like scratching the forehead as I come through here with the product and then just piecing out a little bit through here. And just use your fingertips to open that up and then add in through here and squeeze it in. Okay, so this will start drying for me. So as I'm cutting through the back, uh, the front is already drying and uh, she's happy with the way it's looking. She can see that the product is really doing its thing through here. Okay. All right, so front is finished.
So this was uh, the end of our concave layering. Now we're going to switch in and we're going to do convex layering. So in my pre um, my pre section mannequin, you can see that just for control, I had um, divided into two subsections. As I'm cutting, and most likely in the saw, it'll just be one that I'm using. Okay, so I have my underneath well tucked away, so I'm free to put in all the layering through the back and not to have to worry about the front. So do you have a question before I move to the back? Ashley wants to know, she knows this was touched on briefly yep. earlier, but what face shape do you feel is best for this cut? Oh my gosh, I feel like any face shape. I know that seems an easy answer, but I think with the shag, and if we just kind of look at our pre-done mannequin here, I'll take her glasses off because she's indoors here. Um, it really is just a very natural, it's a very organic haircut. So it's going with the, the face shape, it's coming and accentuating the jaw. So if she does have a wider jaw, she might want to pull that in a little bit here to slim it down. Um, and if she doesn't, she can open that up and then just bring these pieces right in through here. Um, it's great for anybody who likes to wear their hair in a ponytail because you can see when it goes up into a pony, it's a style in itself. So um, I really do, I feel like I, I can't even think off the top of my head someone that I would not give a shag haircut to. Really the texture would be the thing that, that would stop me if she has frizzier hair or super curly hair because we know if we cut super, hair, uh, super curly hair short, that's gonna get really curly. And if you leave some long, the weight pulls it so you would have a different curl pattern, okay? So before I take the next question, I'm gonna move into the back. And what I've done is I've just taken a little bit of the guide from the front that I did my concave layers, and this will be my guide for my convex layers. The rest of the hair, I'm just going to simply just clip this very lightly out of place. It's still drawing the way I want it to in the front, but I just want to concentrate on the hair in the back. So not getting lost in a haircut is, is very important to me, especially long hair. Okay, can I take another question? Yes, Nicole ask any tips for making a shag look fuller on flat fine straight hair um that one i would say then you'll need to use a styling tool um mostly the shags are very organic very natural but there are hair types that you'll need to add a little bit maybe with some um i will always recommend spraying first with some air control you know prepping it with ever whatever volumizing product but some air control and then use your curling iron for beach waves the best best answer i can have Okay, before I take the next question, I'll just start with the cut at the back. Um, start in the center back right here and taking a vertical section. Again, just so I don't get lost, I'm gonna push the hair out of the way that I'm not using. And in the back, because I don't want to bring everything into the center because I have my safety net underneath that I won't uh, worry about creating a hole, I'm just going to pull everything straight out and it will just go to the previous, only over direct to the previous. And here I'm doing convex layering, which means following the head shape. I simply ask my guest to tilt her head down so I can keep my back nice and straight. And I'm um, starting again with my uh, blades going in the direction of the haircut, which is going around here, so it will be elbow down. The best way to do convex layering is to start with your fingers on the head shape, pull up until you get to your guide. Once you get to the guide, stop. Don't do anything else with your fingers. Your fingers should be mimicking your head shape right here. And then you cut around your fingers through here. Take half of that down and then bring the next section and do the same thing. So the elevation will change right here. So now my elevation, everything is 90 degrees from the head shape. It's going to stop here, stop when I get to my guide and follow that around. Again, cut around, take half of that away, come back down here and then remember head shape. So I'll put my fingers on the head shape follow my fingers with the comb, stop when I get to the guide, and then work my way around. Okay, and I'll simply do that all the way down till I run out of hair, till I get to my disconnected area right here. Pull straight out, stop at the guide. Okay, and then my next section will come in. So that's number one, two will come, two will come to one three will come to two, so on, all the way around. So I'm gonna move my body so I can see what I'm, I'm cutting and then just over direct to the previous. So as I'm doing that, can I answer another question? Cheyenne 
would you say there should be a maximum hair length to make shags look good or is it suitable for any length? Any length. I like collarbone shags. Um, if you look on my Instagram, I just did I, what I was talking to you about hairbrained. I hope you all are a member of the hairbrained community, a great inspiration. But they um, did the competition of lived in texture. So I did a short shag for that one. So that uh, is the one that I won that fabulous prize for. So you can see all lengths. Um, I think when you're doing this much layering, if you're trying to keep it uh, kind of waist length, it, it ends up looking a little Stevie Nicks, which is cool if that's what you're going for. But if it's um, more of a salon friendly, I would say keep it somewhere around uh, armpit length, if I can say that. Um, that's, that's the perfect ideal shape for Bob, collarbone and short. Okay, and then to keep myself organized, I'm gonna move section one out of the way. So I'm just looking at section two and then three will come into two. Okay, can I answer another question? And Michael would like to know, do you put product in the hair before you start the cut? Um, the only product that I put in the hair is a uh, prep product, meaning a leave-in conditioner to keep the hair um, moisture content in the hair so I don't have to keep spraying it down. Plus, it's a good uh, base for the hair, and I talked to my guest about the benefits that it's doing. So the Nutriplenish is keeping the moisture. It's, you know, as we say, our thirsty. It's thirsty, so it's really hydrating the hair. But as far as a product, no. I put the product at the front once I finished cutting, but I don't, I don't, generally cut with a, a product in the hair. Just my choice. Margot is asking, from a bird's eye view, Yes. would this haircut have a round shape? Um, hmm. That's a really good question. So, so from a bird's eye view, so I guess would if it be I turn, on the sides? turn her around, if I put her head upside down, yes, it'd be rounder. But if we turned her upside down here you would find that everything's going into the center so it has two different techniques this is best as I can answer that question I hope that helps Darcy is asking how would you suggest styling this for everyday wear ah the, the natural. I mean, that's what everyone's looking for. And, you know, I'm in Chicago. I know that we have very similar temperatures. So the humidity that kills our hair, um, introducing your guests to natural styling, because I know I use a curling iron of mine. And as soon as I go out in the humidity, it's like I didn't do any work to my hair at all. So um, I prefer to um, do a natural curl in my hair and your guests will love that too. So I think a natural drying, if you want to dress the inspiration pictures that I showed you, um, it looked to me like she had a curling iron to create beach waves. That's another way of doing it. Um, even if you do it straight, she kind of looks a little rock chick straight, so no wrong or right. All right, so I'm just going to continue on the opposite side and doing the same thing, just following that through. All right. I love all your questions. Thank you so much. I don't like to be the one doing all the talking, so can I have another one, please? Yes. Marlena would like to know, what would be too short for this length? If that hmm. makes sense. What would be yeah, too no, short I know, for Yeah, no, I know exactly like what you mean. Um, uh, again, I'll just say, if you have a look on my Instagram at the uh, short shag that I did, that's pretty short. So I still think it looks pretty cool. So I don't think there is too short on this. Oh, but there is too short, yes. So thank you for that. Thank you for bringing that point up. And that would be when I'm coming into this first section right here, the triangular section. Uh, great question, I'm sorry I missed that, saying that myself. Um, right here, this, this was uh, part of that curtain bang. So before you cut that, I want you just to measure that, that old dressmaker, measure twice, cut once. We're gonna look at this and where is this falling? Really be mindful that this should fall right um, below or at the occipital bone. The problem is if she's already has previous layers and this layer is this short, and you're basing everything off of this. As you come into the back, that layer ends up up here. And then you've just taken her from like 70s cool chick to like 80s rock chick. <laughs> Not what we're looking for. Uh, she ends up looking a bit Rod Stewart, you know, where the layers are sitting up here. So thank you for that. That's very important. This would be too short if that layer goes up or too high there. Okay, great.
one more. One more, thank you. Alexis is asking, why did you start in the front versus the back? Okay, great question. Um, typically, like it's like another class I teach with a French bob where the focal point is where that, that bob hits right here. Anytime I have a focal point, I start there because I don't know if you've had enough um, experience now with cutting to realize sometimes when you, you do your consultation with your guest and you talk about where you want that um, bob line to sit at the front um, and then you start at the back and then all of a sudden you end up you know, an inch longer than what you discussed. Um, it all depends on the head shape and how that's moving around. So if I have a focal point like that, with that bob, the French bob, I will start at the front because I know exactly where I want to place that line. In this case, with the shag, the focal point is the fringe, and as you see, all of the layers have been based off of that fringe. So everything is connected. The only part that's going to be disconnected is this area I have in the ponytail. It's under the parietal ridge. So that will be the reason for starting the front of the shag, because it's the focal point and everything is based off of that. Okay, so I'm nearly finished with this, just over-directing everything back to the previous and this is convex layering. So I hope you really understand the difference between the two and the effect that you'll get here. Okay, and then having my guest head tilted away because if her head was straight up, I would be really in a very awkward body position. So just asking your guest to tilt her head down, look down for a little bit. Usually they're on their phone, so it's no problem at all for them to be looking down. Okay, and then I'm coming to my last point right here. So the last section behind the ear, over directing to the previous. Okay. All right, and then the last part of this cut here is I want to bring everything up from the convex to the concave to make sure that I'm totally connected between both. So I'll bring all over here. There might be a little corner between the two different techniques. If there is right here, just knock off that little corner right here. And the same on the other side. So I'm big into knowing your history of hair and where these, where everything originated. So the 70s shag, this is a 70s shag. Uh, so if you look at um, doing any research in the 70s, you'll see that there was um, Keith Richards from the Rolling Stone, Patti Smith, who was dating Keith Richards at the time, as well as all the other Rolling Stones. Uh, she had this haircut. She kind of originated it. So uh, you see a lot of models wearing this now, younger, like the 18 to 20-year-old models are wearing this. All right, so it's the revival of the shag. Okay, so we can see all that texture coming out through there and then through the back. So I have all my layers. Okay, so at this point now, your guest might be a little concerned that uh, she has a mullet. So what we're going to do is just take out this ponytail and show her and assure her that all of her length is still here. All right, so she still has all her length. And if you notice, the whole vibe of this is very skinny, very slender all the way through. And I saved the perimeter till the end because it wouldn't make sense to have a really cool shag haircut and then a straight line. So what I'm going to show you is a little technique of uh, refining the perimeter and just keeping that very cool look. So if my guest is sitting in my chair, I'm gonna pull all the hair to the front of her shoulders right here. Again, begin at the front. And if she had shoulders, she would tell me, where does she like this to sit? So once she decides where that is, there's a twist this. And then with the inner corners of my shears, there's an open close, open close. Match that up to the other side here. And twist the hair and open close. You can also do this with the razor at the end of that. And then I'll take that hair that was sitting in front of the shoulders and then I'll come behind the shoulders and I'll use that as my guide. And you can see there's very little to be cut through here. So I'll just take that all in one section and cut that down. So by doing this, it's also giving that organic feel to the hair that it still has that, you know, layers all the way right down through the bottom. Okay. All right. Then right through the very front, there's just a little connection to be done right through here. So this was the area that we kept left off at the fringe. Here's the perimeter. 
Again, just opening the wide, the inner corners of my blades, just open, close, and work my way down. Okay, and that will just give a light blend to the hair, but not give her the traditional face framing that we've seen a lot. Okay, so styling, again, would be putting your uh, product all the way through. And when you're putting the product, you're just easing this through just a little bit more through the back here. And easing the squeezing it into the hair, as opposed to really pulling the hair out, squeezing this in. And just working the product through there, getting the shape in, using your, your thumbs to then move this away, separate this out. And then styling. Styling, the main thing, keeping it very 70s looking and that Bridget Bardot, that sort of sexy look to it. We really want to keep this slim in this area. It's okay to give some volume up here, but the important part of keeping it 70s is keeping it very slim. And then hand drying, just drying as much as you can with your hands, just squeezing that hair, just manipulating around, moving that around the way that you want. Open that up, bring this through here, show your guests how cute she'll look with just her ponytail in here. She wants to do a little updo. And then squeezing that product. If you're using a diffuser to dry, keep it very flat. All right, keep the diffuser very flat because you can look from 70s to 80s by just picking it up and doing this, the old way of diffusing. She ends up getting a bit wider on the sides and then you lose the whole look. And really like move that fringe. So if she wants that side part and you can just take it from the side and move it over and do what you want from the side. But really a shag has no parting, falls in the center, just a natural fall and a beautiful natural dry. Okay, so do I have time for a couple of questions? Quick. Yes, all um, right. Marlene, Mar uh -huh. sorry, Marlena, uh -huh. can you perform this technique as a pixie instead? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, I'd love to see it if you do it. Please uh, tag me, show me how that looks. That'd be awesome, yeah. Right. And Cheyenne, uh -huh. in your opinion, the shags look good straight as well? Um, I think, as I said, I, I've seen, I blow dry them straight. They look a little bit too wispy. I prefer structure if the hair is going to be straight, a bit more structure. So that would be, that would be my key to it. But I have seen them straight. They do look very rock and roll. Yes. Okay. Um, my last um, question I'm going to give to you, and this is for the prize, and this will be whoever answers first. And um, uh, it, it's going back to the beginning. So who was my inspiration for this haircut? I'll give you a moment. And then that will be text to me who answers first, and then I will announce your name for your prize. Okay. All right. So that will be it. Um, I'm not going to blow dry because I, I love this just natural dry. I would tell my guests to go out and then the car ride home just to like bring our hands through it. And I promise you they'll love you for this, that they don't have to whip out their round brush or a straightening iron or a curling iron. This is really it. And especially the summer, hopefully coming soon, is their hair will dry very, very quickly with this. So that is our little shag cut and the little detail through here. Okay, so do we have a winner yet? It's coming All right, through, the I winner think. is coming through, so I'm excited. And I hope to see you guys in person. Please, if you're doing this haircut on anyone or you mannequin, please tag me so I can see what you're doing so it doesn't end here. Okay, and the winner is Cheyenne. Cheyenne, okay, awesome, Cheyenne. And thanks for all your questions, too. Thank you, everybody, for your questions, for joining in. Um, I look forward to seeing you in person, but uh, please keep up with me on Instagram. I'd love to see your work. All right. Thank you so much. I'll sign off. Thanks to everybody at IBW for having me.